Good morning, fellow saints. Welcome to the second week in our sermon series on the values of Timbers Community Church. We started this out last week, and uh, I warned you that I was going to be giving a brief introduction each week that involves some repetition. And so you're prepared for this if you were here last week, and if you weren't, you should go listen to that sermon at some point. So um, we're talking about values this morning. We we began this process in mid-fall of 2019. Uh, it was delayed quite a bit by the pandemic hitting. We we finalized our values the same week as that happened. And so uh, we've waited and prayed into this and realized this fall is the right time to lay these out before us. So we, we had come to God with these questions. Who have you made us to be? What have you, who have you made us to become? What have you made us to do? And the first of these questions is a question of values. Values tell us what's truly important to us. They go to the heart of our identity, and having them laid out clearly before us allows them to act as guardrails as we follow God's leading. They also act as a firm foothold, a place to put your foot, plant your feet as you begin to move forward. Um, not that you ever move beyond your values. They stay with you. So what are the values of Timbers Community Church? Um, well, at Timbers, we value being a community of grace, transformed by the Word of God, reliant upon the Holy Spirit, and sent to proclaim Jesus. Let me say that again. At Timbers Community Church, we value being a community of grace, being transformed by the Word of God, being reliant upon the Holy Spirit, and being sent to proclaim Jesus. Uh, we're going to go through these one at a time, looking at their deep, deeper at their meaning, their scriptural foundations, and their practical applications, um, and the kind of four action steps that flow from each of these. And we started last week talking about being a community of grace. We talked about God, how God is a gracious God, and Jesus came full of grace and truth. And this means that he looks upon us with unearned favor, unearned goodwill, that he loves to bless his children and give us good gifts, and above all, he loves to give us himself. Being a community of grace then means that we are people who are defined by and characterized by the grace of God given in Jesus Christ. We seek to live this out by welcoming the stranger in our midst, by listening to and loving one another with extravagant kindness, by living as a forgiven people, forgiving and accepting others, and by creating a safe environment for the sharing of real stories. Today we continue, we're going to move on to the, to the next value, we're going to look at being transformed by the Word of God. Now, what does that mean? And why am I holding up a Bible, you might ask? Okay, you're probably not asking the second question. <laughs> Last week, as we looked at Community of Grace, our symbol was a communion cup. And I, I needed to explain that that connects to this great moment of grace on the cross. The symbol for being transformed by the Word of God is a Bible because, wait for it, this is the Word of God. Um, I know, shocking. Um, but just as last week we needed to begin by talking about grace, this week we need to begin by talking about the Word of God. And uh, we can actually start in the same passage where we were last week, John 1, 1 to 18. We focused as we read that last week. This isn't going to be a passage for the day, by the way. We're just starting here and moving into it. But last week we focused on that passage about how John declares that Jesus came full of grace and truth. What an amazing set of imagery that is. But there is lots of amazing imagery in that passage, and, and quite a bit of it revolves around this, this talking about the Word. Um, the, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And John is talking about Jesus, Jesus who became flesh and dwelt among us. He says, the Word became flesh and tabernacled among us so that we might be saved, so that we might be transformed. Here, verses 12 and 13 of John chapter 1 again. To all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. To all who receive the word, God gives power to become what we were made to be. To enter into our position as children of God and be remade, in the words of Jesus as he speaks to Nicodemus, to be born again. This is all transformation language. Um, when we meet and receive Jesus, we are transformed. 
We do this through the community of God's people, and this is what we talked about last week as we talked about the community of grace. But we also do this, meeting and receiving Jesus and being transformed by his presence and his truth through the scriptures, through the word of God. Now to sink into this, I want to turn to our passage for this morning, which is 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verses 10 to 17. No, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 to 17. So you can turn there, pull it up on your phone, open up another tab on your browser. 2 Timothy 3, 10 to 17. I'm going to ask that we stand together for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, <clears throat> I'll give you some context first, though. So this is... Um, this is a letter from Paul to Timothy. Um, Timothy is like a son to Paul. Paul has mentored him and trained him up as Timothy has been called to lead a church. And now, as he receives this letter, Timothy is, is leading, he's the pastor of a church that Paul had planted. So this is all very close to Paul's heart. And in the midst of that relationship and in the midst of that reality, Paul writes this to Timothy. Now you have observed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and suffering the things that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Indeed, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But wicked people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work the word of the Lord. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you long to come into our lives and transform us. Thank you that the word became flesh, Jesus. Thank you that you descended to be with us and that you are with us to this day. Lead us this morning as we look to your word and learn what it means to be a people of yours. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's be seated together. Continue in what you have learned, says Paul. Continue to know the sacred writings that instruct you for salvation, for transformation through faith in Christ Jesus. And know, says Paul to Timothy, know that all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, so that every servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Uh, it's another one of these passages where Paul is being very expansive, very, very big, very firm, um, so that every servant of God may be equipped for every good work. All of Scripture is God-breathed. I love that language. Um, God-breathed. Uh, it is, it's, it's from the very mouth of God. If you go back to Genesis and, and God forms humanity and then he breathes the breath of life into them and they become living beings. Uh, it's this great picture, this breath of life, this life-giving presence, right? And God breathed, and you talk about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the words for spirit also mean wind and breath. Um, so it's, it's, this language is, in, Paul's using this language quite intentionally to link all of these things together to talk about how amazing scripture is. The scriptures have been given to us, he also makes clear, with a purpose. They're meant to change us. They're meant to facilitate an encounter with God and thus be transformative in our lives. And, and the Bible is full of descriptions of how the word of God is more than the just passive words on a page. So we can read um, in Hebrews that the, the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. You can read in Isaiah that the word of God goes forth and does not return void, but accomplishes the purposes for which it was sent. Now, this may seem strange to talk about a book like this. This is a double-edged sword. It's going forth across the land like rain to water and bring out fruit from the harvest. It's a book. And truth be told, if, this, if, if all we're talking about is a book, words on a page, 
then all of this is strange. Um, there isn't anything magical about words on a page. And there's nothing automatic about transformation. You, you can't just have read this and, and suddenly you're transformed. You can't, you can't sleep with this under your pillow and, and find that everything is good. Um, what stands behind all of these assertions, Paul's assertions here in 2 Timothy and the other ones that I just listed, is the presence of God. What stands behind all of these assertions is the God the Father, who has given us his word in order that we might know him and be changed by having a relationship with him. What stands behind all of these assertions is the person of God the Son, Jesus, who is himself the word, who became flesh, and who continues to speak to us today. And what stands behind all of these assertions is God the Holy Spirit, who is sent to us to live in us and draw us into fellowship with God the Father and God the Son, and who speaks to us as we come to this word, who convicts us and guides us into truth, and, and by that encounter with God, we are transformed. In other words, the word of God is given to us that we might meet God himself, know his character, experience his love, and follow him as disciples. And those things are transformative. Meeting God, knowing his character, experiencing his love, and following him as disciples are transformative. Now you can begin to see how all four of our values connect very tightly together, and we'll see that each week. So with all of this before us, as we talk about the Word of God, what does it mean to be a community, to be a church that values being transformed by the Word of God? Well, it means that we as a church are going to lean into His Word. We're going to come with confidence and faith, expecting to enter into His presence through His Word, expecting to meet Him, expecting to experience His love, and expecting to be transformed in discipleship. It means that we don't look at the Bible, sorry, that we do look at the Bible first and foremost as a God-given gift through which we come into the presence of the person we really need, God himself. There's lots of other good things about the Bible, but that's the key. This is a God-given means to meet him. Valuing being transformed by the Word of God means we prioritize these things. It means that we believe this about the Word of God and we act accordingly. We want to be a people transformed. Now, as I shared last week, for each of our values, we have four action points, four follow-ups, four clarifications that begin, but only begin to flesh out what this will look like meant to spark our imagination and get us going. It's meant to be that, that foothold, that step that you can push off of and move forward. So practically speaking, as a people transformed by the word of God, we will do four things. We will study and obey the scriptures. We will engage with and apply the preaching and teaching of the word. We will learn and grow in the way of Jesus with one another. And we will create spaces for curiosity and discussion about the whole Bible say those one more time. We will study and obey the scriptures. We will engage with and apply the preaching and teaching of the word. We will learn and grow in the way of Jesus with one another, and we will create spaces for curiosity and discussion about the whole Bible. And each of these points connects to the explanation and all that we've already said this morning. We study and obey the scriptures because they are the word of God given us that we may know God. So we need to study them. Um, we're doing a midweek series right now on different ways of studying the Bible, and you can look that up on our YouTube channel as well. And I talked about studying this week and how studying is a specific kind of reading in which you have to set aside time for concentration, in which you have to engage in repeated reading and study of the material, where you have to intentionally seek understanding, you have to reflect on what's going on. It's, it's, not, it's a process that you have to step into. But it's not just that we study the Word of God. The Word of God is meant to be followed, not merely heard or even understood. It is meant to be obeyed. It is as we follow God as disciples that we are transformed. And so we, as a people who value being transformed by the Word of God, will study and obey the Scriptures. We will also engage with and apply the preaching and teaching of the Word. 
these are the means that God has given his body to continue to grow in our interactions with the scriptures. Right? You can read the passages about gifting. You know, some are gifted as apostles and evangelists and prophets and pastors and, and teachers and preachers. And, and those of us with those gifts are given them for the sake of the body so that we all might be equipped for every good work. Right? So that we might live into the calling that God has given us. So we commit as people who value being transformed by the word of God to engage with the preaching and teaching, right? Same thing with study. It's the same kind of idea where we want to really, we want to push into it. We want to lean into it. We want to, we want to engage and we will apply it um, because it's not enough to just hear. We can't just be hearers of the word. We have to be doers of the word as well. So we will study and obey the scriptures, we will engage with and apply the preaching and teaching of the word, and we will, thirdly, learn and grow in the way of Jesus with one another. In other words, we will do discipleship, and we recognize that discipleship is something that we do as a community, that we don't step into faith knowing the ways of Jesus already, but we have to learn them, we have to grow into them. And this is how we answer the call to be disciples. Fourthly and finally, we will create spaces of curiosity and discussion about the whole Bible. So let's, let's talk about each of these words. We'll start at the back. The whole Bible, because all scripture is God-breathed and useful for rebuking and correcting and teaching and training in righteousness, right? These are the words of Paul. Discussion, because discussion is one of the key ways that we learn as a community, right? Um, we come together and we talk about these things and we ask questions and we, we get confused together and we learn and we grow. And curiosity, because we want to approach the scriptures with a desire to learn. And we don't want to turn anybody away in terms of having questions and wondering. Uh, we don't want, you know, certain books or difficult passages to be off limits. We want to be able to say, that's really interesting. What's going on there? Because all of this opens up the way for us to engage with and study, etc. All the things that we've talked about already. So, this is what it looks like. At Timbers, we value being transformed by the Word of God in all the fullness and richness therein. Now, each Sunday we've said we're going to have um, a story and an application, and we the stories are, are live in our services, and they're on Facebook Live if you want to watch them. They're not on YouTube at this point, though that may change in the future. So if you're watching this on YouTube, then you're going to get um, Pastor Jessica next talking further about practical applications. And uh, yeah. I, I want to say, like, take it away, Pastor Jessica, but she's not in the room. She's on the next video. So uh, enjoy, and God bless. <laughs>